what if i told you that type 2 diabetes is not always a progressive disease if you are a type 2 diabetes patient recently diagnosed and you've been told that you got to live with it rest of your life that may not be true either big bold statement isn't it well traditionally for decades we've been treating all our type 2 diabetic patients with medications which stimulate insulin and if that fails we put them on insulin from outside but today i want you to think with me argue and discuss whether this is the right way we've been doing all these years and what's the rationale behind it i'm so glad to see that finally the american diabetes association and european society both came to a consensus in 2019 and gave us this statement well you may find this complex to read but all it means is that if you actually put yourself on low carb diet eventually you're likely to need less diabetic medications and you're likely to be off insulin and your diabetes can be reversed that is fascinating isn't it to understand the facts we need to understand the physiology a bit so take a normal person for example and if he or she eats food mainly comprising of carbohydrates then as we all know it stimulates the pancreas to produce insulin hormone insulin hormone has two jobs one is to push the high blood sugar into the cells so that the blood sugar is well maintained and the second job is that it's actually a fat storing hormone so this stored fat can be utilized or used in future as an energy source if required you all know this simple graph that if you eat more carbohydrates maximum stimulation of insulin is because of carbohydrates 50% less for proteins and almost none for fat so this is quite crucial to understand that if you eat more carbohydrates you're likely to stimulate pancreas more and you're going to make it tired till it goes on producing insulin in order to keep your blood sugars normal so what goes wrong in diabetic patients so imagine a person eating high carb diet for number of years and he keeps on having high insulin levels for decades and one day his pancreas and his insulin are going to get exhausted to keep his blood sugar levels normal and what happens is high insulin meaning more weight gain and more fat storage now remember if that person becomes obese over the years the fat around the organs like liver and muscles gets accumulated and coated and we know that insulin doesn't work properly if you've got fat around your organs for example insulin's job of pushing the high blood sugar into the cell doesn't occur properly if you've got fat too much of fat so imagine an obese person his insulin levels are high but that insulin is of no use because it's not able to work properly due to more fat so the blood sugars of this person remain high high blood sugars again stimulate insulin and this vicious cycle goes on and on and on for number of years till one day that person shows signs and symptoms of diabetes and at that point he sees his doctors the doctor tells him that your sugars are too high you are diabetic he puts him on medications to stimulate more insulin and maybe if that doesn't work insulin from outside so aren't we making this person worse by giving him insulin from outside what needs to really happen in this patient is we need to look at the cause and the effect so cause in this person is not high blood sugars is the insulin resistance or high insulin levels and the effect is high blood sugars so what we are doing all these years is to treat this effect of high blood sugars just purely with medications or insulin but not actually paying much attention to why is it happening so it's almost like a person is vomiting due to appendix problem and we are actually giving him just tablets to stop vomiting completely ignoring the fact that he's vomiting because of appendix so unless you treat the that appendix he is going to continue to vomit so similarly we need to address 
the high insulin levels and the insulin resistance. And the only way to break the cycle is this. So ask the person to eat low carb diet. Low carb means less insulin stimulation. Less insulin means again less weight gain and less fat storage. So you're giving that person an opportunity to burn his fat, to utilize his fat. And that actually itself makes him lose weight. Weight loss and less fat, meaning insulin, starts working properly. And when insulin starts functioning better, that means his blood sugars start dropping. Less blood sugars compared to before, meaning less stimulation of insulin. And then imagine this cycle goes on and on until that patient is slowly off insulin, off medications. And finally, you can label him as diabetic reversal or in remission. Isn't that amazing? Fascinating. So how do we define diabetes reversal? Well, if somebody's HbA1c, which is your three months average sugar test, is less than 6.5%, at least for two months, and that patient or person is off medications for that length of time, you can call him as this patient is in diabetic remission. We don't like to call it cure because as soon as that patient slips into high carb diet, that diabetes is likely to come back. So we call it reversal or remission. And I think it's not that difficult even for Indian population. I mean, if I ask you to stop eating chapatis and rice from tomorrow, you're going to think what I'm going to have in my plate for breakfast, lunch and dinner. But We'll talk in future videos as to how exactly you can eat low carb diet easily and maintain it. Because remember, keto diet was a big thing, wasn't it? It made a lot of noise, but it didn't work very well with Indian population for two things. One is patients couldn't enjoy it. And second, they couldn't stick with it for too long. So sustainability was a big issue. So we don't want to do that with this low carb diet. So what we want to do is to eat say less than 130 gram per day of carbohydrate and maintain it for a number of months to see the effect. Now you have to remember you have to do it very safely and under medical supervision of your doctor because once you start doing it your sugars may fluctuate and go up and down and there is a chance of hypoglycemia because your sugars start coming down. So make sure you take your doctor's advice before doing it. Also, it is not suitable for somebody who has got, say, diabetes for a very long time, 10 or 20 years. And then they may have underlying insulin deficiency along with the resistance. And that's why it may not work with them very well. Similarly, this diet is not for type 1 diabetic patients who have complete lack of insulin. Again, we don't advise this for our elderly patients. So there are certain group of population who may not be suitable for this kind of diet. But most of us are, aren't we? All you need is motivation, perseverance, and lifelong behavioral change. This is a commitment with yourself for you to be off medications and insulin. Come on, you can do it. Try it and let me know how you got on it. Thank you.